And welcome back to Season 3, Episode 3. We are doing stretching of the graphs. Now, I don't like that word compressing, so we're not going to be using it at all. It will not be on your diploma. They will call everything stretching. So I want you just to, whenever you see the word compress, write the word stretch. Now, the two different types that we're going to be looking at, we're going to be looking at y equals a f at x and y equals f at b x. Now again, if we have something inside the brackets with the x, that right there, that's our horizontal. If we have something that's not inside of the x, if it's outside, then that there is going to be our vertical. Let's look at them. All right, to start off with, we're going to start by doing a replacement. For this one, Let's replace y, which is meaning y, wherever you see a y, put a 2y. So let's do that into our equation. 2y equals x cubed. Hey, we replaced the y, so that's got to be vertical. But we want to be able to resolve for y so that we can graph it. So then y equals 1 half x cubed. Here's our graph of y equals x cubed. Let's look at what happens with 1 half x cubed. And I'll bring in my guest presenter here, and the lady will explain it to you. Consider the graph of y equals x cubed. Now consider the graph of y equals 1 half x cubed. Look at the points where the graphs intersect the vertical line x equals 2. On y equals x cubed, the point of intersection, A, is 2, 8. On y equals 1 half x cubed, the point of intersection, B, is 2, 4. The y coordinate of point B is 1 half the y coordinate of point A. This will be true for any point on y equals x cubed, and the point with the same x coordinate on y equals 1 half x cubed. So, the graph of y equals 1 half x cubed is the image of the graph of y equals x cubed after a vertical compression by a factor of 1 half. Now consider the graph of y equals 2x cubed. Look at the points where the graphs intersect the vertical line x equals 2. On y equals x cubed, the point of intersection a is 2, 8. On y equals 2x cubed, the point of intersection, c, is 2, 16. The y-coordinate of point c is 2 times the y-coordinate of point a. This will be true for any point on y equals x cubed, and the point with the same x-coordinate on y equals 2x cubed. So, the graph of y equals 2x cubed is the image of the graph of y equals x cubed after a vertical stretch by a factor of 2. Now consider the graph of y equals negative 2x cubed. Look at the points where the graphs intersect the vertical line x equals 2. On y equals x cubed, the point of intersection a is 2, 8. On y equals negative 2x cubed, the point of intersection d is 2, negative 16. The y-coordinate of point D is negative 2 times the y-coordinate of point A. This will be true for any point on y equals x cubed and the point with the same x-coordinate on y equals negative 2x cubed. So, the graph of y equals negative 2x cubed is the image of the graph of y equals x cubed after a vertical stretch by a factor of 2 and a reflection in the x-axis. Well, thank you very much, lady, for that enlightening little ditty. Okay, so we've got, again, you replaced y with 2y in the first one. We replaced y with 1 half y, and that gave us 1 half y equals x cubed, y equals 2x cubed. Those are the two graphs we looked at. And then please make sure you do one little thing with this as well. When you see that word compression, just write the word stretch. 
we stretch in both directions, away from the axes and towards the axes. All right, when we look at vertical stretches, what we're going to be starting with is an A outside. An A outside of whatever function, right in front. The point and what's happening to any point along there, let's take our general x, y, that's going to map to x, comma, a, y. What we're doing is we're multiplying all y values by whatever that value of a is. But the replacement into the equation is y is replaced with 1 over a y. So we'd have 1 over a y equals f of x, and then we just bring it over to bring it in front. All right, let's look at the first example there. We got the graph of f of x being shown. Then we're going to do negative 1 quarter f of x. Our a value is negative 1 quarter, but wait a minute. That's actually two different transformations at a time. The negative is one transformation, and the one quarter is a second transformation. You cannot combine them together in your wording. So the wording that we have here, both of them are outside the brackets with the x here. So we've got our first one, that negative. The negative is telling us that we have a vertical reflection about the opposite axes in the vertical, about the x-axis. We're flipping it over the x-axis. Now, you don't have to write the word vertical as long as you've got the about the x-axis. The one quarter, that's going to give us a vertical and you have to write vertical for the stretch part. Vertical stretch by a factor of one quarter. And this is also about the x-axis. What this first part is meaning here in English, this in purple, that's your transformation language. In English, this is saying multiply all y values by negative 1. And then the second one is saying multiply all y values by 1 quarter. And let's also look at what replacements were made into the equation. Both of these are vertical. They should have been on the other side of the equation. This actually should have been written as negative 4y equals f at x. So our replacement for the first one was y was replaced with negative y. And for the second one, y was replaced then with 1 quarter y. Identifying our replacements is what's going to tell us every time that it's a reflection about the x-axis and that it's a vertical stretch by a factor of one quarter. Let's pick off some points there on the original, and I'll use ones that are divisible by four, because we got one quarter there. So I'll use the eights, the fours, the zeros, the fours, and the eights. All right, so this one there, we got negative eight and eight, and that's going to go to, we multiply the y's by negative one, and we multiply the y's by 1 quarter. You could multiply them together by negative 1 quarter, which is going to give us then negative 8 comma negative 2. I'll just jump all the way to 0 and 0. And if I multiply, the x is going to stay the same, just the y is going to change. Multiply it by negative 1 quarter. Hey, we've got 0 again. Hey, that point's the same. Then we've got 8 and 8. I'll use that one up here. And that's going to go to 8. Multiply the y by 1, negative 1 quarter. We got negative 2. 
So we multiplied for each one of these the y by negative 1 quarter. 0 and 0 stay the same. Invariant. That point is called an invariant point. It stayed the same after we did the transformation. Then we've got negative 8 and negative 2. We've got 8 and negative 2. And it continues on. Don't forget to label your graph. That is y equals negative 1 quarter f of x. Our domain now, we can have any x value, so x, e, r. Our range is from our x axes and everywhere down. So our range is going to be y is less than or equal to 0. And it did say the, from each function, domain and range. So from the original, it was x, e, r, and above the axes, so y greater than or equal to 0. Let's move into ver uh, horizontal now. We're going to do an x replacement. So x is replaced with 2x in the equation. That gives us y equals bracket 2x cubed. And the other one that we'll do is when x is replaced with 1 quarter x, that gives us y equals bracket 1 quarter x cubed. Notice that it's in the brackets with the x, therefore it's horizontal. And again, I'll let the guest instructor teach you on this one. Consider the graph of y equals x cubed. Now, consider the graph of y equals 2x cubed. Look at the points where the graphs intersect the horizontal line y equals 64. On y equals x cubed, the point of intersection a is 4, 64. On y equals 2x cubed, the point of intersection b is 2, 64. The x-coordinate of point b is 1 half the x-coordinate of point a. This will be true for any point on y equals x cubed and the point with the same y-coordinate on y equals 2x cubed. So, the graph of y equals 2x cubed is the image of the graph of y equals x cubed after a horizontal compression by a factor of one half. Now consider the graph of y equals one fourth x cubed. Look at the points where the graphs intersect the horizontal line y equals 64. On y equals x cubed, the point of intersection a is 4, 64. On y equals 1 fourth x cubed, the point of intersection c is 1664. The x-coordinate of point c is 4 times the x-coordinate of point a. This will be true for any point on y equals x cubed and the point with the same y-coordinate on y equals 1 fourth x cubed. So, the graph of y equals 1 fourth x cubed is the image of the graph of y equals x cubed after a horizontal stretch by a factor of 4. Now consider the graph of y equals negative 1 fourth x cubed. Look at the points where the graphs intersect the horizontal line y equals 64. On y equals x cubed, the point of intersection a is 4, 64. On y equals negative 1 fourth x cubed, the point of intersection d is negative 16, 64. The x-coordinate of point d is negative 4 times the x-coordinate of point a. This will be true for any point on y equals x cubed and the point with the same y-coordinate on y equals negative 1 fourth x cubed. So, the graph of y equals negative 1 fourth x cubed is the image of the graph of y equals x cubed after a horizontal stretch by a factor of 4 and a reflection in the y-axis.
Thank you very much, lady. Uh, just remind you here to get rid of the word compression and make a note how when we put bx in there, we actually had a factor that was 1 over b. That's different than the vertical. So horizontal is slightly different. But for the same reason that the opposites occurred with the translations. All right, example number two. We're doing the horizontal one here. We've got g of 0.5x. That means that our b value is 0 0.5. We've substituted into the equation. The x is replaced with 0.5x, but it's actually easier. Always use uh, fractions instead of decimals. It's easier on these ones. So we're going to replace in the equation, wherever we saw an x from the original, we're putting half an x. Now 100% of the time, when you see this replacement, this is going to be horizontal, because it's an x, stretch, because there's multiplying in the middle there, by a factor of the opposite of 1 half, which in this case is going to be 2. And then about the y-axis. Whenever it's horizontal, it's always about the y-axis. We're stretching away or towards the y-axis. That's transformation language. But English actually means multiply, because it's a stretch, multiply all x values, because it's horizontal, by 2. Well, let's just take some of those points. Here's this point. The x is 3. Multiply by 2. That's going to give us 6. This one here. The x value is 4. Multiply by 2. That's going to give us 8. This one. Negative 1, multiply by 2, negative 2. This one, negative 3, multiply by 2, negative 6. Collect or connect all of our dots. But which point's going to stay the same, be invariant? That's going to be when you have x of 0. So that point, the y-axis, the y-intercept, will stay the same. All right, let's look at domain and range now. Original. Okay, domain started at negative 3 and went to 4. The range started at negative 2 and went to 5. So for our new domain, we're multiplying all of the x values by 2. That means you're going to take your x of negative 3 and multiply it by 2. Gives you negative 6. You're going to take your 4 and as well multiply it by 2, which gives you 8. And now the range. Do we need to multiply that one? No, those are y values. Keep them as they are. It's still negative 2 to 5. No change on the vertical. All right, our mapping notation. If we have a point, x and y, and we have an equation, a, f, b, a of f at b, x. Our a is our vertical, our b is our horizontal. The point is going to become 1 over b, x, and a, y. All right, f of x is going to 4, f of negative 0.5x. So our a value is 4. Our b value is negative 0.5. Going to change it to a fraction, negative 1 half. Our a value is outside of the brackets with the x. It's vertical. That's a vertical stretch by a factor of. Now, because that A is vertical and it's on the wrong side, it's not with the Y, 
We already took the opposite. So it's don't do it again. It's by a factor of four, which means in English, multiply all y values by four. Now with that v value, that's horizontal. But we've got two things happening. We've got a reflection in the negative, and we got a stretch with the 1 half. So it's a horizontal stretch by a factor of, just going to shorten that for right now. We got 1 half in the equation, but it's where it's supposed to be. We need to do the opposite by a factor of 2, followed by a reflection about the y-axis. Now, you could do either order between the two. Stretches and reflections, doesn't matter which order you put them in. This means in English, and I can combine the two when I talk about the English part of it, multiply all x values by 2 and negative 1, or you can say negative 2. You can never, never, never have a negative stretch factor. So neg never have negative stretch factor. It is a reflection if it's negative. All right, let's just list a bunch of points that are on our f of x. I can see there that negative 2 and 0 is a point. I can see negative 1 and 1 is a point. I can see 2 and 2 is a point. And I can see 7 and 3 is a point. Okay. I'm now going to take all of the y values, multiply them by 4, all of the x values, multiply them by negative 2. So. 2 times negative 2 times negative 2, 4. 0 times 4, 0. Negative 1 times negative 2, 2. 1 times 4, 2 times negative 2, and 2 times 4, 7 times negative 2, and 3 times 4. There's our new points. There's no way we're getting them all, all of them on there, but we'll just put the ones that we can. 4 and 0, 2 and 4. That's the best we can do with that. Oops, right in there. And label your graph y equals 4, f of negative 0 0.5x. All right, let's finish off with the tough question. We got the graph in red of f of x. We're going to do a vertical and or a horizontal yep, stretch. But we don't know which one. We, we don't know what, what stretches have been done. So let's look at what's happening to the points that we're given. This point originally started at 3. Horizontally, it went in to 1.5. Ooh, that's half of the way from the axes that it was. So we took that 3 to the 1.5, and we multiplied it by 1 half. Hey, that looks like a stretch factor. Then we took the 9, and we got the 9 down to 4.5. Hey, we also multiplied by 1 half to get to there. Never say divided by 2. Stretch factors are always multiplied. So that automatically then just tells us this is a horizontal because it's x. Stretch because we're multiplying by a factor of one half. On the vertical, it's vertical because we're dealing with the y. Stretch because we're multiplying by a factor of one half. These are the same. There's, there's nothing that changes between the English of what we multiply and the stretch factor. The factor is what we multiply. The problem comes when we convert it to the equation. So to ease that pain, what I'm going to encourage you to do is your replacements. 100% of the time, horizontal is an x. Stretch means we're going to multiply 
and we're going to multiply by the opposite in the equation. This is where the change occurs. This is when we do the opposite between the graph and the equation. And that's a little tricky. For the vertical, the y is being replaced with 2y. Now we just throw that in. 2y equals f of 2x. And then just resolve for your y. y equals 1 half f of 2x. Done deal. All right, I encourage you to look at the sidebar questions um, and possibly even try a few questions, maybe on Math Excel, see what you got, and we'll see you in class.